Hello number one, so welcome back to my channel. This is the method on speaking. Let's get right to the point. The Votiger. Do we like him? Absolutely. Yesterday I watched the entirety of the reveal on twitch.tv for For Honor, of course, for the Vortiger. They made it really interesting and I'm very, very excited for this character because here's the thing. Since I started playing For Honor, I've been complaining about the fact that I could not have a knight with sword and shield. And to be honest, the fact that they really listened to us, not just me, a lot of people did wanted that. And the fact that the Ubisoft devs, they uh, listened to us and they made a hero that we really like, the idea of having a knight with sword and shield I think it's a really really cool thing because here's the thing uh, up to now my main is the warden and the reason for that is because I mean he looks like a, a hero right a, a medieval knight in shining armor wielding his two-handed sword his long sword I think that is really really cool but for, as far as the other knights well here's the thing the conqueror had a lot of potential but my problem with the conqueror is I literally hate this weapon the flail i hate it i just don't like it and we will see why in a minute i'll get back on that because this flail looks a lot like the flail he's using which has a lot of flaws and we'll get to it in a moment me i'm the sword kind of guy this is a my arming sword and i've got a basically a version a lap version and a wooden version as well which i'm going to show you uh, on this video this is an arming sword and it's similar to the overall concept we could say of the sword wielded by the vortiger although his version is a little bit closer to the lap version that i've got here and we'll see why in the section of this video where we will talk about the weapon shield and of course the armor the Vortiger has. But as I was saying, as a fan of the knight uh, faction, uh, as far as the other knights were concerned, as I said, I could not get into the Conqueror because of his weapon. Although, as my personal taste, I always prefer Sword and Shield. In every video game, whether it be Dragon Age Origins or whether it be Skyrim, I always use Sword and Shield. It's my favorite combo. It's epic. I like it. I like the balance of defense and offense that you have with Sword and Shield combination pretty much in every video game and in reality as well. As you know, I also do several martial arts and I fight. I've got a sword study group and we fight. I'm a sword guy, so give me sword and shield. And I'm very happy uh, that finally they did. So Vortiger, the, already the weapon combination, big thumbs up. Now, one of the things that some people were criticizing when we were asking in the Ubisoft forums uh, to have a knight with sword and shield is the fact that already many characters were wielding a shield. Of course, you've got uh, the, the most obvious one being the Viking um, warlord who's using a Viking round shield and a Viking sword. And of course, uh, the uh, conqueror himself that we have mentioned, and he's using a heater shield. And then you also have uh, the gladiator and the Valkyrie who are using smaller shields. So a lot of people were complaining, saying if they make a knight with sword and shield is going to look is going to fight in this in the exact same way as these other guys and there isn't going to be enough variation in the game now, the reason why that makes absolutely no sense from both a realistic point of view and the for honor universe fantasy point of view is because these shields are very different so if you give the exact same shield to two characters then i'm with you okay i understand you're right but if you give different shields then yes they are all shields but they are very different i mean the way a roman scutum is used one of the reasons why i'm still pissed off with the fact that the roman uh, centurion does not have a shield i mean it's it really drives me nuts because the gladius as a weapon is a weapon optimized to use together with the shield if you don't have a shield you should use a longer weapon to at least have the reach advantage because the shield allows you to get in closer a massive shield like the scutum centered grip viking shield is completely different from a from the way a heater shield is used and the way a heater shield is gripped and therefore the sort of techniques that you can do the sort of techniques that you can implement the way you move it the way you use it offensively and defensively are completely different it's like say, saying that you know characters using wielding shields they're all going to have the same mechanics it's like saying character using weapons all have the same mechanics because when you have a buckler and a, a scutum, they are as diverse in the way they are used as a dagger and a great sword. So already the variation was not a problem and I'm glad that the devs understood that. So what sort of shield did they give to the Vortiger? The kite shield. Now, um, is it historically accurate? No. But it, particularly the, the further on you go, uh, you know, the, the, the higher the tier, the, the more fantasy it becomes. Is that a problem? Absolutely not. But in terms of, because it's a fantasy world in a fantasy um, realm in a fantasy setting so it doesn't matter but it's interesting 
what is actually wrong and what is right. Well, the first thing is that in the majority of cases, when we talk about medium to big shields, they were made of wood. And some shields had a rim around it, although very important to say, and that's something they get always wrong in the video games and, and films as well, is that the heater shield, the triangular typical medieval shield, does not have rims, okay? No metal rims on those. They were made of full wood and then covered sometimes with fabric or leather and then they were painted but they did not have metal rims and, and they were not made and full metal heater shield as far as I know they did not exist. Now personally I think the, the choice of the kite shield is a very very intelligent choice because again it's a shield that we didn't see and it's a very very effective shield because it grants more protection than a heater shield. You can use it offensively and defensively. It's an excellent shield but as we could see in on Twitch as we go forward it becomes comes in, it starts incorporating more and more metal meaning that even the developers the designers said that it starts as a mostly wooden uh, shield and then it starts incorporating leather covering which is fine and then it starts incorporating as well uh, more and more metal now whether this metal is a plating or whether it's actual solid metal in both situations the shield would become would be very very heavy in fact probably too heavy to be wielded it. Maybe with metal plated shield it could still be wielded but a full solid metal kite shield uh, of this thick uh, absolutely not it would weigh too much but again in in the fantasy situation I have no problems with it because at the end of the day these guys are heroes one of these guys of the heroes that we use in For Honor can easily destroy an entire battalion of minions so of course they're basically demigods so it doesn't really matter give him whatever you want I think it looks really cool now we're going to talk about the weapon and then we're going to move on the overall concept art and what and, and whether we like it or not and what modifications we would suggest but first and foremost the weapon is using it's a sword but the way it looks okay this is my arming sword it's a okashot type uh, 12 it's an excellent uh, replica very very well made by hand hand forged and it's spring steel now as you see this is an arming sword first and foremost for the blade blade length and it's not exceedingly long and also because as you can see it fits one hand my hand now often in video games what they do they tend to do this so what happens in this kalima seal here because of larp regulations um, the hilt as you can see it's a bit bigger does this ever happen in medieval times of course you've got long swords that have uh, you know hilts that are a lot longer than this as well and you've got bastard swords which are one and a half swords if you will so swords that you can wield both one handed and two handed now that would be okay but as you can see the blade is too short particularly if compared to the arming sword so for this hilt this blade is too short instead they got this is an excellent uh, replica it looks almost exactly like the metal one that I have of course the pommel is missing because I had to finish to end someone rightly with it but apart from it it's a very very good also pretty well balanced weapon so what he's using is it a long sword and um, to me it looks more like a bastard sword um, it's not an arming sword I don't think and personally I very much like arming swords so I wouldn't been I would have been happier with that but interestingly enough again there is a lot of variation so I wouldn't be surprised if the hilt length varies because we see that it does vary with other uh, warriors and other heroes in the game there is a lot of variation of course we're just talking about the basic starting set I would be happier if they made less bulky um, blades and with a more intelligently designed um, distal taper um, so the blade getting thinner and thinner as we get towards the tip often in games they they just they don't get the geometry right also we see that some of the possible variations of the advanced sort of um, equipment that we get is a flamberge so the sort of um, serpentine looking blade those are historical I'm really happy that they added those excellent cutters uh, probably one of the best cutters you can get in uh, as far as swords are concerned the only thing is that that sort of sword the reason why they weren't that common is because it would be extremely difficult to produce and therefore very exceedingly expensive now in this case the fact that the Vortiger can have one of these very complex and expensive blades makes sense because he's the leader of a cult so he's probably super rich and and, and he is also he was a noble knight 
ignited and then it sort of embraces darkness again another feature that I really like about this character it is a very gloomy um, bleak character um, still be belonging still, still fighting for the knights by using anything he can he doesn't really care much about you know nobility and honor and again in a game called for honor is kind of strange no one really cares about honor anyways in this game so um, anyways it fits it fits so um, talking about the overall concept art and the overall look of the character one thing that I don't like is the fact that I don't see um, I, I see too much leather um, in the basic torso protection, I would have been happier to see plate like a cuirass um, or even mail to be honest um, or, or a coat of plates like well coat of plates we see it already be worn by the conquerors I understand but maybe like a nice breastplate um, thin waisted I think it would have looked really cool we know that he uses plate because he's got both arms and legs with full plate and some variation he's got mail um, some variation is you can see some skin of course it depends again um, um, but I would have been happier with a bit more metal on the torso. But as far as the overall look is concerned, he looks like a, a, a pretty cool knight. Um, the only thing is that, as you can see, when you start with the character, it looks a lot like a, an in-between between an you know Assassin's Creed and a knight because of the of the hood that he's wearing on top of his head. Now um, that's fine because it, it sort of gives him that characteristic Ubisoft look. We know angels in Ubisoft in games like Heroes of Might and Magic do have this design so you've got the hood and the full plate armor um, which is cool um, and also it gives him more of a darker the fact he, look you can't really see him is mysterious and he's got all the makeup on his eyes so I think it fits but I'm happy that they also chose to let us wear a helmet if we decide to and I think that that is really cool uh, that may that, that is very intelligent as well and not many developers in our day and age do that the fact that you gotta be make as many people as you can happy and in a game that allows you to have a lot of customization it's great that yes you want to have the character to give the character a mysterious look but if I want him to look more like a knight then I'm glad that you made me happy as well and some helmets look more historical other helmets they make him look like a disciple of corn from Warhammer like a chaos warrior and I think that is really cool in fact the the knight um, this this uh, Vortiger from st when he starts it looks more like an, an in between an assassin and a knight but then he becomes closer and closer to an actual chaos warrior and in some which I think is amazing with lots of horns and, and, and demonic looking pieces of armor and then some things that they showed make him look like a, an undead warlord so I think it's really cool this darker side of the character the overall concept art I think it's spot on so big thumbs up we like the Vortiger and we can't wait to use him so one of the problems I have with the weapon of the Conqueror the flail to the masses now uh, it looks very medieval and exotic but the thing is that even for medieval people this weapon would have looked rather exotic it's not to say that it was never used it was used but it's a weapon that wasn't very common as far as we understand and therefore it's a weapon that it's kind of strange to see on a battlefield wielded by a knight who could uh, definitely afford to use so many diverse and different kinds of weapons that would have been a lot more effective in the battlefield than this and if you really like impact weapons if you want to face if you're going to face a full plated or fully armored uh, opponents and you need something with with some punch then go for a mace I mean a mace is so much safer and easier to use also because one of the problems with the flail that we see in the game is that the shaft is too short and therefore it would be so easy to hit your own hand with it and actually deal so the weapon would be dangerous for both you and your opponent that's why I'm not a big fan of this weapon I understand it's a fantasy situation so it doesn't really matter fine but it's just as personal taste since I hate using it both in reality and in video games that's one of the reasons why I could not get into the conqueror regardless of the fact that apart from that he looks quite cool now talking about using the Vortiger, I'm going to make another video on the Vortiger after he is out, after I play a little bit with him, after I see the, the moves, I'm going to talk about how realistic and how uh, plausible his fighting style is from a historical point of view and we're going to try the actual moves with my friends, we're going to use sword and shield and we're going to try and mimic the, 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 the transition between moves to see if they're actually doable, if it's possible to fight like a Vortiger, so stay tuned on the Metatron channel if you're interested, and remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. Goodbye.